Hi there. Welcome to Celtic Advent once again. So today we're spending the last day focusing on the Holy Spirit and tomorrow we'll begin the four regular candles of Advent. So we'll begin with hope from tomorrow but we're just going to round up our thoughts and reflections on the Holy Spirit today. I've loved this week, I don't know about you. Just the thought of the Holy Spirit hovering over our lives, the chaos, the darkness, the void, the mess, bringing life and light and fullness to us, order. Whether he comes alongside us, the way he leads us into truth. And today we'll spend a little bit more time thinking about the difference between the Holy Spirit today and the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament and what we can expect today. But before we dive into everything, let's just take a moment in quiet. Let's just make sure we are aware of the presence of God that's always with us. We just have to notice it. Spend a moment in quiet. Thank you for your promise. You'll always be with us. Amen. So today's scripture is from King David. <clears throat> it's Psalm 51 verse 11. He prays a very simple prayer. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. I always find David fascinating. He seems to be a man living outside of his time actually because for most people in the Old Testament their understanding of the Holy Spirit and their experience of the Holy Spirit would be that the Holy Spirit would come momentarily and then would leave again and often in the, in the Old Testament so the times before Jesus they would, their experience of the Holy Spirit would be that he'd come and that, that he'd enable them to do something. Maybe he'd enable them to fight really well. Or maybe he'd give them strength, he'd empower them to do something. So we think of Samson and the strength that he had. And he was often empowered by the Holy Spirit to do those things. And then King Saul, so the king before David, when the Holy Spirit came to him, he prophesied. So the Holy Spirit would come enable them to do something in particular and then would leave again. So I find it fascinating that David prays this prayer about don't take your Holy Spirit from me as though his experience of the Holy Spirit was actually different to everybody else's around him. But certainly in the Old Testament that was the expectation and that would be the norm would be that there would be times when the Holy Spirit would come to them, would visit them, would enable them to do something and then would disappear again. So it wasn't a permanent sense of the Holy Spirit being with them. And of course, when Jesus comes to earth and walks on our planet as a man, just like us, as I've said many times this week, in every respect, those words from Hebrews are so powerful. He became like us in every respect, just like you, just like me. Amazing. But in Isaiah 61, it talks about Jesus and his experience of the Holy Spirit. And we read there that Jesus was anointed with the Spirit to preach good news to the poor, to set the captives free, etc., etc. The scripture from Isaiah 61 is very powerful. And it gives the sense that the Holy Spirit was with him and stayed with him. We've talked about him being filled with the Spirit as he was baptized in water led by the Spirit into a time of incredible testing in the wilderness and then coming out of the wilderness having beaten all the temptations that the devil could throw at him and coming back in the power of the Spirit and then he moved and lived for the remaining three and a bit years of his life in the power of the Spirit. So that brings us to today, it brings us to us. What should our expectation be? Jesus when he was talking to his disciples about the Holy Spirit 
explains the Holy Spirit like this. So this is from John 14. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. So you can see there a pretty good explanation from Jesus of the difference between the Holy Spirit before Jesus and his death and resurrection and then the Holy Spirit after Jesus' death and resurrection. So beforehand the Holy Spirit was with us but since Jesus' death and resurrection there's this possibility for us to know the Holy Spirit in us. It's really the heart of the new covenant that God writes his laws on our hearts. So instead of us trying to have to live by a set of rules and a code of ethics and something that's written down, you know, the Ten Commandments and all the, the laws of Leviticus and, uh, and, and Numbers, etc. Instead of that, which was always set against us, now there's this sense that we have the law of God written on our hearts and the Holy Spirit living inside of us, continually helping us and empowering us to be the children of God and to live the way that would please God. It's just an amazing proposition. Let's just pause to ponder for a moment. What an incredible gift this really is. Let's just reconsider the, the, the concept of the fact that God, the Holy Spirit, this equal third person of the Trinity, comes to live in us. In us. And let's just dwell for a moment longer. Quite a few thoughts here about the impact that uh, the Holy Spirit had on Jesus as he walked on earth. So by the complete, personal, limitless infilling of the Holy Spirit, Jesus fulfilled his ministry and communicated with his Father. Jesus overcame evil in the desert through the power and person of the Holy Spirit. He carried out his ministry of healing through the power and person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus spent time in intimate prayer with the Father, spoke to him and heard his voice through the power and person of the Holy Spirit. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, your will be done, not mine, through the power and person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus walked up that hill to Calvary's cross through the power and person of the Holy Spirit. All of those things that Jesus did through the power and person of the Holy Spirit, it's now possible for us to live just like that. Let's just dwell on that thought for a moment. And the simple action again from today's thoughts and reflections is that we would engage with the Holy Spirit as he seeks to empower us to live way beyond ourselves but to live this life that is possible as we receive the power to become the children of God. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we invite you into every part of our lives. We don't want you to live in a tiny corner of our heart. We don't want you to live in a, a tiny little broken down shack, but we want you to live in the fullness of all that we can possibly offer you. Every single corner of our lives, every area of our lives, we invite you right in. We invite you to empower us to be more than we've become so far. We invite you to empower us to live as children of the King. We invite you to empower us to stand tall. We invite you to empower us to be good news to those around us. Come Holy Spirit, flood our hearts, fill us, make us witnesses. Amen. Amen.
Amen. So tomorrow we begin with hope. Have a great day. Bye now.